Okay, yesterday we left off with this and basically what this is is this has the hierarchical relationship between position velocity acceleration which is the same as F, F prime and F double prime and, and so you have position, velocity, acceleration in the same sort of relationship and what happens is as you anti-differentiate instead of going from position to velocity to acceleration here we're doing the reverse but in so doing we need to have additional information to give us an accurate to give us an accurate from acceleration velocity and we're given additional so we anti-differentiate and then we have to plug in and when we anti-differentiate that's uh, first of all that's what kind of solution a what um, oh gosh general. General. it is a general solution thank you and then, and then and then the extra data, extra point we have, like the velocity is 25 when t equals 3, we plug these in, and then we have the particular solution for velocity, and then when we have particular solution velocity, we can use that to find a what kind of solution for position? What kind of solution for position can we get a velocity function? What kind of equation? Can we, what, kind of, what kind of solution can we get out of velocity equation by anti-differentiating? A, a, again, a, again, general, general solution. And then what can we do to make this a particular solution? Yeah, use the 10, uh, use the 1 comma 10 point to plug back in then you solve for C and then you have finalized. So this is quite a process, isn't it? Because you got it from, from acceleration to velocity and then from velocity to position. And I bring this up because what I tell you is going to be on your final, a problem like this. All right? So I want you to be ready for that. Hey, Mr. Drew, will there be like a, will you have like a review for the final that you're going to make? I don't know. I don't know if it will be a, a, a review. I don't have one that's a, I don't have a review packet. But I think what we're going to do for that is I'm going to look at the test and so we're going to have a review for that. We're going to review the things that are on there, including one like this, right? So there won't be like a, like a packet? I won't have a packet. I will not have an official packet. I'll have little homework assignments, but no, I will not have an official packet this time. I don't have one ready right now, let's put it that way. But that's an idea. If I can get one together, I might. It'll be a small one if I do. Okay. Now, here we have uh, some, this, what I want you to do right now is turn to these examples. And I want you to, with these examples, do one through six right now. Do you have that? So go do one through six out of these. And then use the rules of anti-differentiation if you need to. And these look like they are mostly power rule type of things. And little combinations and stuff. And I'll write up. I'll write out the answers in just in just, a, in just a few minutes. I'm going to write out the answers for it, so you can check your work against what they are.
So these are your first three worked out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Questions on these? This is a, yeah, what it is, this is anti-differentiation. So what you're doing here, you're doing the opposite of differentiating. And so what you have is that should you're, six. should be over six. Thank you for catching that. Yeah, that's what caught you. Yeah. Yeah, it's over six. You're right. But, but other than that, you have the idea, other than my little mistake there. Okay, thanks for catching that. Okay, let's look at the next set here. Okay, this one here, we have So that's number four. And uh, for number five, so that's number five. Here for number six. So that's number six, okay? All right. Let's go on and look at a look at a few others. On the test, will there be multiple choice on all of them? There will actually be a lot of multiple choice problems on that test. The ones that aren't multiple choice will they be like just there'll be ones where you have to write out the answer. But even on the multiple choice ones, I am looking for more than just circle the right answer, depending on the problem, but, but most of them are ones you're going to have to actually work out. Okay, what I want to do is, is these ones should be pretty simple. Nine, what you have is that's a sort of a weird looking one, but this one actually, the answer to this one is going to be pi x squared over 2 plus x over pi plus c. So that's going to be what 9 has worked out. Does that make sense? It just looks weird because pi is sitting there as a constant. That's all. Okay. This one What I want you to do is do 11 and 12. Look at 11 and 12. We'll go over that in just a couple minutes.
Dele. Also, will we be allowed to use like our notes on the final or no? Uh, it, it, well, we'll see. I mean, probably a, at least a, uh, a sheet that will have your some basic things. Okay, this is what this is what I'm getting for number eleven. So, yeah, what what I did is I did the I did the rewrite in the calculus friendly form here first, and just followed the steps. That's what I did. That's what you got. So you have something that looked like that or similar. Okay. And then then for twelve, I. I rewrite this as x to the one half dx, and so your answer is going to be x to the three halves divided by three halves plus c. And what's the same as dividing by three halves? What's the same as dividing by three halves? Multiplying by two thirds. So we go ahead. Two thirds, and once you get used to this aspect of it, you just can automatically you you just automatically re use reciprocal, and then if you want to put it back in rational form, in radical form, you can write it like this. Something like that, or you can put the cube on the outside. That's one way to do it too. Okay. Can you ten? Ten? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Did you do? Did you already try number ten, Gavin? Yeah, but based off the other two, I think it's favorite. <laughs> okay. Well, again, I, for ten, I would do a rewrite like this. I'd write here x to the negative two dx. And so now. I just would raise this to the power of 1, so x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus c, so that's going to be negative 1 over x plus c. Okay, so it's following the same rules. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't want you to. I don't want you to say that out loud in the class. Go ahead. Maybe raise your hand. Note to self. What I want you to do is, yeah, I want you to look at, why don't you do problem 14? Yeah, we're just, 14 is a good little mix of things. Yeah. Ah, you're silly. That's right. Silly is my middle name. What was it really? 
Not really. Hannah probably thinks Silly's my middle name. After all, what she's called. Okay, well, what you need to do, Kylie, is you wait till you're my age. That stuff will be popping even more. My shoulders do pop. And it just came upon me over time. <laughs> Most of the time they feel pretty good though. Just kind of weird pop. You, you know that my body is a temple, don't you? Yeah. Did I tell you? Yeah. My body is a temple, ancient and crumbling. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> is you always, Aaron, you said you always forget the plus C and I just, and I wrote down plus C just because you told me that. Nah. And I wasn't ready for it. I got you. Yes, he did get me. So this is, this will be a rewrite of that problem here. And so now to integrate, you would make this, you would add one to that. So you're going to have X to the one half and you're going to divide by one half which coincidentally is multiplying by 2, right? And then we go ahead and take minus x to the, we got to add to that, so that's going to be added, is that 5 thirds? Mm -hmm. 5 thirds, and multiply that by 3 fifths plus c. And so now what we have is we have 2 square root of x and then over here we would have minus and they're given the same I'm just going to put it in the same rational form so I'll just say minus three-fifths x to the five-thirds plus c Boom. I got it. You got it? Most of you did. How did you guys do on it? You did okay on that? I got it. You did? Okay. Or close? Close. <laughs> okay, good. Good, but what's... Uh, there is a problem on your test that's going to involve these kinds of rational uh, expressions, and then you have to get the right answer. So that's, that's you have that to look forward to, or dread, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. I only one half. <laughs> okay. The the thing that I like uh, about this this slide here is it really yes. it really outlines strategies or it mentions strategies for different types of problems. So I want you to go ahead and look at the. Uh, I want you to go do number sixteen according to the instruction there and then we'll go through little r 17 18 okay we'll look at number 16. and this is the kind of thing where uh, if you can do that binomial expansion kind of in your head you can really sort of uh, get your express elevator to your solution Yeah, the express elevator, the little shortcut tricks. They're express elevators. Number 16? 16, yes. And I think we talked about these last, we started talking about these last year in pre-calculus too. You remember that, like squaring the binomial? Okay, I think I did the whole yeah. multiplying out. I assume 
Yeah. Hey, Mr. Drew, on the final, did you say that we were you were going to do a curb on it? Okay. It sort of depends. Yeah, I'm sure it will, but it's sort of, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. But which type of curb are you doing? I know there's like a few you do. Yeah. Uh, what I've done is I've used like uh, a square root curve. And so it'll probably be some form of that. And how does that one work again? Well, what it does, you take the you take the square root of the of the score. And add it. Yeah, of what of how many you got, or what you got wrong? No, that was of what you got right. Okay. So, so what it is, for instance, here's a square root curve. If you get, um, say, you get fifty percent of uh, got a raw score, you take the square root of that. You get what's what's your square root of of 0.5. Well, it's going to be 0 0.707. So that, according to that square root curve, that would be like a 71. Oh. If you get 25% right, which no one should get, everybody should do better than that, that'd end up being a 50. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Because the, the square root of 0.25 is 0.5. But what I want to see from your grade, I want to see, I want to see like get you get 90, and I take the square root curve, and you go up to like a 94 or 93. That's what I want to see. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I don't know. The way I look at it, at just take it all down. if I have like a high 90, as long as I get like in like the 70s range, I'll still see all those correct uh, files. All that works. So. Yeah, the weighting of the final. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it is. And here's, a, here's another thing about your particular situation is that you, when it comes to class ranking here, class ranking happens here in this class, really. And so you just don't want to. And, and and what it is, class ranking wise, this is a superiority over other students, other other other, other seniors in the school for you because no one else has this class, right? Mm. So it's going to help you. This class is. Excuse me. The, yeah, this weighted. This class is weighted. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Of course, it's weighted. Last. I didn't know that. I thought I was just in here. <laughs> Now you have purple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Miss Dominguez didn't tell you that. Okay. Yeah, no. okay. She told to, me it was supposed to be. This. <laughs> she told me I could either take another math or take them. Well, here's, here's the thing about it is that uh, we had I had a calculus student last year, Robert, who was taking calculus, and he wanted to take financial math just out of interest for what was taught in the topic. But then he looked at it, and it would have torpedoed his class ranking. Mm -hmm. And so he said, no, because of what it was, would have averaged or diluted down his up with because it didn't have the bonus points of uh, honors classes or so forth. So that's, that's why I didn't do it. OK, did you guys do this one? Mm -hmm. this, uh, Let us do this I one. I had 16, but I said, I don't know if you were supposed to do 17. Yeah, so, six, so what he has is, in my mind, if you expand this out, if you have this, going to be four x squared, and then two times the first and last, so it's going to be minus twelve x, and then plus nine, and so that's just that's just a mental expansion right there. I couldn't do it mentally, but I worked it out. So you worked it out, not mentally. Yeah. But here's okay. What it is, you take the first term squared, which is that. And then, and then the last term squared, and this middle one is two times the first and the last. So that's it. So now, when we take the answer, we get, we get x, we get 4x cubed over 3. You saw it? Minus 12x squared over 2 
plus 9x plus c and you can you can simplify this one a little bit to have it be 4 thirds x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus c. How did you do on that one? You did that? Right. You just cash money. How did you do on that one? Carson, how did you do on that one? Okay. All right. I want you to look at number seven. I'll try these other other uh, tricks. They call them tricks. I didn't want to call them tricks, but the book called tricks. So I want you to do number 17, and we'll talk about that. And what do you want like this? Uh, let's see. Now this it tells you what to do. Split in the individual fractions, then integrate. So it tells you what to do. Oh, nice. So so what it is? It's so, like a power over power one. Like yeah. Now, so what you do is this number 17, the quotient rule, uh, it's called quotient of powers. Quotient of a power is the rule that's called. So you go ahead and, and split this up. It's the integral of x squared over x to the fourth, or x to the fourth plus. 3x over x to the fourth plus 1 over x to the fourth and that's going to be dx and then you can further simplify here you have this is going to be equal to 1 over x squared plus 3 over x cubed plus 1 over x to the fourth dx. And then the next, I would go ahead and make this to x to the negative 2 plus 3, x to the negative 3 plus 1 plus x to the negative 4 dx. And then you go ahead and you can you're ready to integrate now. So you have x to the negative one over negative one plus three x to the negative two over negative two plus x to the negative four negative three, excuse me. I have to add, right? Negative three over negative 3 plus c well not plus c yeah this hang on a second I got that wrong there we go now that's right I put an integral sign there I shouldn't have does that make sense though okay and then so you really you can tidy up now at this point our, our answer is going to be negative 1 over x plus 3 over, actually must be minus, isn't it? Minus 3 over 2x squared, and it's going to be minus 1, no, minus 3, excuse me, minus 3 over x cubed plus c. Did I get that right? Does that look right? That okay. Okay, what I want you to do now is go go look at this one, 18. Actually, I want you to do another one than 18. I'm going to go down the page to another one. I want to do another one instead of 18. So... So, oh, you 
Okay, here, I want you to do this 18 right here. I want you to work out this particular 18. You see that? Yeah. So do that one. And what that is, that's they, they give you f prime of x equals 3x minus 1. Is that where we're doing? Where's that at? So we're finding the integral. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're going to find, you're, you're given f prime of x, but you're going to find f of x. Okay. So find f of x. Okay, and I don't know, I'm not 100% sure this is right. That's what I got. That's what you got. So this is your particular solution here. How'd you guys, how'd you guys over on the west wall do? Did you guys get this? What was that west? The west wall. I didn't get that, like, the final answer, but, like, Did you get to the general solution? I okay. To you got to the... Oh, did you? Okay. Okay, good. Well, that's really good. Is that way west? Yeah, it's because the sun rises over there, right? Oh, okay. And the sun sets over there. And it's, it's really the, the, way, the way 34 goes, it doesn't go straight north-south. It kind of goes kind of south-south-west. So it's not perfectly west that way, but perfect west, yeah, close enough. Real west is over that way a little bit more, I think angled off a little bit. All right, we are about to the end of class today. I want to show you what I want you to do to get, because this, this is the kind of skill that you can really, with practice, get done pretty well. We're gonna, we're gonna work on some more of these tomorrow, like 20 and 21. But what I want to do, what I want you to do is these. I want you to do one through three, and seven through nine. How's that? One through three and seven through nine. So that should be a, 
that should be like a 10 to 15 minute type of job. Can you do that mm -hmm. tomorrow? And then a class. So you're going to be able to do that, Hannah, 1 through 3 and 7 through 9? Okay, good. Then we'll, 4 through 6? Yeah, don't worry about 4 through 6. I want to keep, keep the, the assignments kind of short, okay?